Saquon Bowers, background singer, lead guitar player of the legendary singing stars, formerly known as Tommy Ellison and the Five Singing Stars. What year did you join? Uh, I joined this group in 07. Yeah, basically Tommy got sick before they had to do a show in Douglas, Georgia. So basically I was just riding along with my pops and Tommy didn't make it. So my dad basically asked me to just, you know, kind of fill in and play what I play what I knew. But you know, when I started playing, I, I actually knew everything. Okay. And once we got on the stage and after the show, the fellas was like, I sounded just like my dad. So they had a feeling anytime Tommy got sick. I just got the, the chance to play. Man, it was crazy. Uh, it's always been a dream to play with these guys. You know, uh, it's been uh, it's been an amazing thing that I was able to do this, and uh, I love every second of it. So, was your was your pop shot that um, you do all the parts and stuff? But you kind of got that idea. He kind of knew because, you know, he'd been training me my whole life, but he wouldn't let me go outside the house and play in public until I was about 14 years old, and I started playing at four. Like, what would you say was the group's biggest hit? Like, your favorite? <clears throat> I got a couple favorites, but I think one of the, the stories that I was always told that God loves you, come home, was the group was the, the song that put the group on the road professionally. You know, but uh, in my era, you know, I had to say, let this be a lesson to you. Drunk driver was one of the biggest hits, you know, of the time in the, in the era. And definitely, let's get closer. You know, everybody loves let's get closer. What inspired you to do uh, Basically, uh, I want to follow in my pop's footsteps. You know, I, he went out on the road when he was 19 years old. I came out here when I was 17, so I beat him by two years. You know, but, you know, uh, he inspired me and in, in being around it my whole life. and. Being up on the guys like Tommy and you know guys like you know Lee Williams and Harvey from the Canton and just being around all this type of gospel music, you know, it influenced me to want to do this, for, you know, as much as I could. Do you recall any of the um, record companies that um, Singing Stars recorded on? Oh wow! Before my time, Nashville, uh, of course, Air Records. You know, uh, the first one—I forgot the name of the first actual company that they did. But uh, it was way back in the early 70s, before I was even thought about, before my father even got in the group. The late, great Tommy Ellison, the superstar gospel. One of the most calm and collective guys I ever met in my life. You know, he was very soft-spoken, but he was very classy. You know, he did everything with class. You know, you never seen him without a suit on. You never seen him without a haircut and a shave. You know, that's just the type of person he was. Even if he was going to the grocery store, he was always in a suit. You know, uh, he was just a very cool guy. You know, uh, he earned a lot of respect out here in the gospel field. Tell us about your dad, the late, great Uh Well, my pops, of course, he joined the group in 1979 at the age of 19. You know, uh, he's been playing with, playing with this group ever since you know, uh, he was a child. He grew up watching Tommy Ellison. And uh, it's a funny story of how he got in the group. You know, he went to audition for the Swanee Quintet in Augusta, Georgia. You know, uh, they told me they weren't looking for a second guitarist. You know, uh, on the way home to my small town, Bamberg, he seen the, the van with the trailer and said, Tommy Ellison and the five singing stars. So he said, he turned around and went to Sam's house and asked him, were they looking for a, a singer or a musician? And sure enough, uh, they auditioned him and another guy and said, my dad could play and sing. So they hired him and he's been with this group ever since. Only thing I remember about Charlie Baker, they called him the snowman. You know, I, I was able to go to his funeral when I was a little kid. I was about seven or eight, maybe a little older. But, you know, I, had, I hadn't had a lot of memories of him because I never really got to know him like that. So what are your desires for the group now? Uh, my desire is to, is to push the group as far as they can go. You know, expand, expand our audience, you know, uh, do different type of venues. You know, uh, we, we got a chance to tour Montana this year, open up a lot of doors for us. You know, I just want to expand, you know, do different type of venues, like maybe talk shows and get across seas a little bit more than we have, you know, just do different things like that. Big O. Big O. The backbone of the group is what I call him. You know, uh, Big O is the heart and soul of the group. You know, uh, he plays the bass, he keeps everything balanced, he's the power of the group, the strongest background singer in the group, you know, uh, and he's been here a very long time, you know. Uh, I love when, to see when Big O get excited and he gets gets to playing and start to jump. You know, it, it's just stuff that I, I visualized as a kid and wanted to be a part of. And it, it's just a blessing to be able to, you know, relive it and be and be with it on stage. Tell me about Sam. Sam is the face of the singing stars. I think Sam joined this group when he was about 13 or 14 years old. You know, uh, 
Sam was here before anybody was. You know, uh, him and Tommy started the group. You know, so Sam has been here forever. You know, Sam is the sound. You know, his guitar has been here so long that it, 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 if it's not in a, in a song, it's not the singing star's music. Tell me about Mr. Billy Hart. Oh, uh, Mr. Billy, one of the original members that was here right along with Tommy and Sam. You know, uh, you know, uh, his song, I Want to Be Loved, speaks so powerful to, you know, it's amazing, you know, the, the, the type of voice that he has. He has one of those strong southern voice, you know, this old-timey voice that you hear in church, you know, and, and his style and his swag is so much different. It, it brings back a lot of old memories and old tapes I used to watch, you know, just growing up as a child. Tell me about Curtis Franklin, known as Nephew. Nephew, one of the most hustling men I ever met. You know, uh, my cousin, my first cousin, his mom and my mom and sisters. You know, uh, he's a hustler. What can I say? You know, he gets things done and he makes things happen no matter what. You know, he, he, he's a strong guy. You know, he's a lovable guy. You can't help with the love. Tell me about that fine instrument sitting beside you. This instrument right here is older than me. You know, uh, this instrument right here came into the group about 1982 or 1983, right after uh, the singer started recorded hit. I'm on my way to grandma's house. Let's get closer and things of that nature. This, this, this guitar has been around for a long time. You, you see the stickers. Some of them are peeled off, but the stickers represent states that we've been to, or my father's been to, okay. and different things like that. You see, you got the Alabama stickers, and it's a ninety, a 1964 Fender American Made Strat. And uh, I had it appraised about four or five years ago, and it was appraised at sixteen thousand dollars, and. I think my father paid what six hundred dollars for it. So you know, it's it's a fun, it's a fun memory of mine, and I'll never get rid of it because this is how I let him live through me.